Today on the No City on the Sideline Dad podcast, episode number 57. Hey, what if God friended you on Facebook? What would you do? What would you say? What if I started making friend suggestions for you? That would be interesting. <laughs> also, my conversation with Armando Cruz, the author of the book Legacy Code, The Modern Man's Guide to Escape Obscurity and Live a Life Unleashed. And you know what? A real cool father and son experience I had with Sean this past weekend. I want to share that with you next on the podcast. Let's do this. Welcome to the No Sitting on the Sideline Dad podcast, a podcast about a journey of discovery and conversations about not sitting on the sideline of life. Let's get involved. Here's host Joe Foley. Hey, welcome to the podcast. My name is Joe. I want to thank you for being here. If this is your first time, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about journey of discovery. We're trying to figure out this thing called life, parenting, and, you know, day-to-day struggles. I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to be like you trying to, I'm trying to figure this stuff out one day at a time and trying to be a better person, a better individual. Because, you know, it is a struggle. We don't have any answers. We keep searching for the answers and hope I could bring that with you, my guests, my topics that I talk about with all the you know, experts that I bring in and all the guests I have. Next, I just want to share a really, really cool experience that happened this weekend with my son. You know, his father and son things are kind of important because these times mean something. Because you know all the first, like, first baseball game, first football game, first car race, first riding his bike without his training wheels. You, mean my, you get my point. Last Saturday... I took my son to his first Bruins game. Before I get into that, I, I, I really want to say thank you to Ryan O'Toole and his son Jameson, who made it very special for me and Sean. It was kind of cool. It was like four guys hanging out. Well, two and a half, well, three guys, because, you know, Sean and Jameson are like a half a person because they're like three feet tall, but four guys hanging out, going to a a hockey game. It was kind of cool. See, where I live, I live in the Northeast. So we drove into Boston. And I'm my son, first time on a trolley, at my trolley, the subway. Three stops, get in, grab a couple slices of pizza. And then we go to the arena. It was directly across the street from the pizza place. It was kind of cool. We walk in, we give my ticket to ride the escalators. The two kids are having a ball. They get to the top, we go down. Actually, we get to the top, we exit, and you can see on the lowest level of the um, TD Garden, walk out, and you can see the ice. You can see expressions on the kids' faces. Wow, that's awesome. It was kind of cool, because it was a few minutes before the game, the hockey players come out to practice, warm up. So my son and his friend, Jameson, they head down to the ice. And what's interesting is, Jameson and his dad are Philadelphia Flyer, Flyer fans, which is no big deal. And they go down, Sean and Jameson go down to the ice, and their faces are playing against the ice. I mean, their glass, looking at the players go by. Because them, these guys look huge. I mean, this place looks huge. It's kind of cool experience. Get to, get to see the Flyers come out, and it was just a really cool experience for him. And after that, we went up to the seats. In one of the videos I posted, he, um, you can hear him. Go Bruins! And him having a good time by dancing, like, who let the dogs out? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or the other one's like, you know, all things you hear typically at a stadium. But my point is, these experiences are important. You can buy him things. You can give him a damn tablet sometimes just to keep him quiet, keep him occupied. But these are the experiences that are important. This was awesome. There was a great experience and obviously, I, I said it before, but I really want to thank Ryan and, and James for a great time. And I really, really enjoyed that experience with my son. Next up, my conversation with Armando Cruz from ArmandoCruz.com. He's an author, speaker, also a father. His book, Legacy Code, The Modern Man's Guide to Escape Obscurity and Live Life Unleashed. This is a really cool interview. I really enjoy, I really enjoy talking to Armando. Some of the things that we talk, we talked based in the interview was how he enjoys spending time with his family, which is very important to him. 
showing his kids how important creativity and curiosity of life. Fit and physical fitness is important. Being a role model for his kids and other fathers. Some of those who said definitely made me think. Life that you live is a legacy you leave. Hmm. It's like setting an example. Think about that for a second. Live life and be an example. There's a lot of good stuff in this interview, so let's jump right in. Welcome to the podcast, Armando. Thanks for having me, Joe. It's it's fun. It, it's one thing I I, I got to ask you. What is a typical Saturday for you for your kids? Because being a dad, you go like, "What are we going to do with our kids today?" There are no typical Saturdays for me. Uh, every Saturday is a little bit different. The truth is, I am blessed to have a big family, and so a typical I guess a typical Saturday or a typical weekend usually involves one or two events of somebody having a birthday, a get together, something. Whether it's at my mom's house, my aunt's house, my cousin's house, my brother's house, my who knows. Somebody has something. It's somebody's birthday. There's always food involved, and we're just going to get together like a family. So that's one thing that's a pretty consistent thing. Uh, the other things that I would probably say is there is just time at home where the kids and I are creating. You know, we don't have TV, so the kids are drawing, they're reading we're making stuff. Uh, yesterday, my daughter had this project that she had to make this rocket ship. Um, and so they had a list of materials you can use and a list that you cannot. And the idea is for school, they're going to put it under a fan, turn on the fan and see if it shoots up. And so that's part of the, the project. So she made her rocket. I made a rocket. And then um, I didn't have a fan, but I have one of those wet dry vacs. Mm-hmm that suck and on the on the back end they they blow so i change the nozzle and then we set up a, a system so we can blow the the rocket ships up and so <laughs> you know after i did it with her then the the boys wanted to get in on it so they made rocket ships and before we knew it we were blowing rocket ships all day <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty cool that's pretty cool tell me a little bit about yourself tell me what what does what does amando do Sure. Uh, I like I like to say that I am a connoisseur of experiences. That's kind of the thing that drives me. I have a curiosity about life. I I really kind of dive into as many experiences as as possible. And you know, to me, that includes the experience of being a better husband, a better father, a better man. Uh, I love adventures, both some. Everyday adventures, whether it's going to the grocery store with the kids or, um, you know, I just recently went across the swamps for about 33 miles uh, running through the swamps and, you know, I encountered water moccasins, gators, uh, you know, different other snakes and deer and it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. And, you know. I like to immerse myself in nature and in life in general. So a little bit about me, that's that's kind of how I operate, what I do for an occupation. I I run two businesses. I have a fitness and physical therapy facility down here in Miami, Florida. And then I also have my coaching business where I work primarily with growth-minded men to help them show up more powerfully in their marriage, in their in their health in their family life, in their business life, and create a legacy that inspires them. So what is, what is a growth, that's me in a nutshell. What is a growth-minded man? Like, what is that? I'm just curious. So when I say growth-minded man, here's a person that is looking to grow. In other words, there's a lot of men nowadays that are just content to be where they are. And I'm okay with that. But if you're content where you are, you're not looking to improve, you're not looking to move forward, in which case I can't really serve you because I'm not in the business or I'm not here to try and convince you of something. I'm here to try to serve you and help you on your journey. And the only way that can happen is if you're willing to take a journey. It's interesting. Also, I was wondering too is um, I read a blog post about you recently talked about being a father and it was... So when it's called to be a father is an honor. There's a father and there's fathers. I don't know if you want to talk about that. It was an interesting um, uh, little short blog post. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, 
being a father is something that that you are when you have a child, but to father someone requires compassion, patience, presence. And I feel like that's kind of the distinction, right? Like mm-hmm. you, if you have kids, you are by the very nature, you are a father if you're a man, right? Like yeah. those are your kids. Whether you take the responsibility to, to immerse yourself in their life and to share with them and to help them grow and to help them become the citizens of tomorrow, so to speak, that's something else altogether. And I think there's one of intent there. And that's why I said, like, there are fathers and then there is to be a father. It's um, it's interesting. I don't talk a little about. I know um, your book, and it's probably the the, uh, the conversation we're going to have today. But it was very interesting. The title of it, the title of the book, the the leg the legacy code, the modern man guide to escape obscurity and life unleashed. That's a very good title. I wonder if you could talk a little more about that. That's very interesting. Yeah. So when I when I was writing the book. I, I really I had to sit down and decide, okay, well, what is it that I really want to write about? And what is it that I, I what is the message that I want to convey? And, and then when I'm going to share the title, how can I actually convey that there? And we went through a lot of di- different iterations of it. But the point is this, you know, there's this, as men, there's a level of significance that we all want to have. And obscurity is the exact opposite of that, is that feeling of, hiding of not even being known. And that's that's a sad place to be where it's kind of like obscurity almost lends itself to being like, did it even matter that I was on this earth? And I think most men would say that that's not the kind of life they want to live, yet few are actively seeking that out to make that kind of an impact. And I talk about you know, this term legacy in two different ways, whether it's a personal legacy or your impact legacy. And they, they you know, that's something we can go into a little bit more. Um, but again, the second part of that, of that title was, and live a life unleashed, which again, going into being purposeful and powerful about what you're creating. In this case, the legacy that you're creating. I talk about, um, the life that you live is the legacy that you leave, right? So your legacy, while we refer to it as what's left when you're gone, it's really a, a, a function of how you've lived your life and the impact that you've created. So if you're not paying attention, being conscious about the life that you're currently creating, by the time your life is over, your legacy will be just that, an accident. It, that's interesting. That's an interesting. Um, what I was thinking about what you were talking about, what you were talking about is the fear, like the fear of being insignificant, like not being important. Um, and that's, that's what kept coming to my mind when you're talking about that. Correct. Right. And that's, that's where obscurity comes in, right? Who wants to be obscure in your life? Yeah. You know, as a man, I, I haven't really met very many. Because <laughs> you always uh, you always wondered, are you enough? I mean, you could really, really work hard, really try hard, do all these things, but are you enough? And here's, here's I guess, maybe the distinction, right? You can have that, but oftentimes that feeling of being enough is a result of lack of clarity, right? Because are you enough of what? And few can answer that, right? Am I being enough? to be a good father. Well, what does being a good father mean? Like you're not even clear on what that is. So how can you be enough of it? So there's always that question because you haven't clearly defined what it is you're, you're, you're seeking or what you want to create or where you want to go or what, you know, who you want to become. And that's part of the issue with all of this. And in the book, that's one of the things that we go over is how to get a clearer vision so that, you understand what that is. What, but I think another thing I'd be interested to talk about is men being fathers, purposeful and full and powerful. We got to have a purpose. Sometimes we don't have a purpose. It's just like sometimes we're just lost. Um, and I'm wondering what your feelings about that. So, so in the book, I, I talk about um, there are five steps to creating your legacy, and this is tied into what you're just saying. This is why I'm bringing it up. Mm-hmm. There's first awareness of kind of that you want. To, 
to create this legacy on purpose. There is then the vision, right? Getting clear on what it is you want to create. Then there's your purpose. That is your why. That is the driver of it. And that's super important because that's the engine that moves you through thick and thin. And then there's your process, which is basically building out the plan, the blueprint to help you get to the vision that you want to create. And finally is the implementation, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can plan it all you want, but if you don't execute, that isn't going to happen. Well, it's it's that, yeah, that makes, that makes, it makes sense, but it's like taking action sometimes is, I mean, we can make all the the goals and everything and not do anything, but sometimes some people get into ruts. How would somebody get out of that rut and take the action and move forward? So let's define what that rut really means, Mm -hmm. right? Um, let me give you let me give you a, a personal example, if you will, of of my life when I was probably one of my darkest places I've ever been. I consider myself extremely extremely fortunate. I've had an amazing life. I have growing up amazing parents, a great childhood. I was the exact opposite. Like you hear all these speakers and they're like, you know. My parent left me on the side of a corner. I had, you know, drug problems. I had, you know, and I'm, I remember growing up listening to this. I'm like, wow, those people are amazing. And then I'm like, who wants to listen to me when I had an amazing childhood? I had great parents. I had all this. And then I realized there is a difference. There is a perspective that I have because I've been privileged for that, because I've had the grace that I that I had this these wonderful parents that they taught me a lot of things that I feel a lot of men have not been taught. My father was my best friend growing up, and I felt like he was someone who was, was of is of great moral. He's still alive, a great moral character, of principle of. He's that person that wasn't just talk. I learned most by watching him do. Because he would follow through and he was consistent, right? So my darkest moment when I was in the rut came about four and a half years ago. And I had my successful business here, my physical therapy and fitness business. And I remember feeling embarrassed. I remember feeling like unworthy to feel the way I felt, which was I'm not happy. I got to a point in my life and I said, is that all there is? Now, from the outside, I had a great business. I got to spend time with my family. My wife and I were married for, at that point, uh, six years. You know, we had a great marriage. Everything from the outside looked good. So who was I not to be happy with that? Like, was there something wrong with me? And I just felt like in this slump, I was like, I I don't want to continue doing this. I want to help people deeper and I feel trapped by my business. And I don't know, maybe you or as someone is listening to this, have you ever felt trapped in your business or in a certain situation in your life and you feel like, I want to keep moving somewhere in a different direction, but I feel like I have this anchor that's pulling me back. That's what I felt with my business. And it got to the point that I got so bad that I almost bankrupted the business because I almost, I I wanted to destroy it. I mean, in my head, that's kind of the subconscious of what was going on. I was turning away clients. I was sleeping six hours in the middle of the day. Like I just didn't want to do anything. And at the same time, my wife was pregnant with a third child. And I remember her obviously being concerned. I wasn't really providing at that point. We were going into debt big time. She was really concerned. And around that time, one of my mentors, one of my coaches reached out and said, hey, I have this retreat coming up in Thailand. I think you would really benefit from it. And after hearing what it was about, and I was like, man, that's where I need to go. That's where I need to do. I need to get out of this funk. And I remember my wife, and this is kind of like one of the pivotal moments that I say like of extreme, like this is. One of those moments in my life where I've experienced extreme courage, or I've experienced extreme courage, but not because of I, for myself, my wife displayed it. And she looked at me, I remember her I, telling her about this, this program that was thousands of dollars that we couldn't afford. And I asked her and I said, listen, you know, this program presented itself, this is it. And she looked at me and she said, 
Um, do you think that this is what will help you get out of this funk? Because I can't help you anymore. I don't know how to help you. And I said, yeah. And she told me, imagine a pregnant woman. If you've ever been around a pregnant woman, you understand that the level of emotional highs and lows can vary by the second. So for her to have that lucidity and the courage to be able to stand in front of me and say, when we couldn't afford it and say, you need to do this not for yourself, but for us, because I need you to be the husband, the man, the father that I know you to be. And the one thing about this is that the, there's a good chance I would have missed the birth of my child because mm. he was going to be born around the time of this retreat. She said, while I want you to be there, for the birth, I prefer you to be there for the rest of our life, serving and protecting and providing in the way that I know you to be, right? Mm -hmm. And that just that just hit me like a punch in the stomach. You know, I don't know if you've ever had those defining moments where it feels like yeah. you got that gut check and you're like, wow, I need to listen to this. I need to I need to make sure that I follow through with this. Well it's like those ruts. And, it's um also an interesting it's thing. Not awesome. And um, what happens is, um, like we're on that rut. And I, I my, my opinion, that's my my experience is that um, the kids are watching, so we're in that in that, in that dark place, and not really being who we really be. And like your wife said, go ahead to that treat retreat, and um, and you you went, and and so you can be a better man, be a better person for your family. Right, and and that and that's why I said because think about this, I would have been flying off halfway across the world. It takes. 24 hours to get there almost, right? So just to get to Thailand takes 24 hours. So no matter what, at the very least, if something were to happen, it would still take 24 hours or more just to get back home. And essentially, what ended up happening is I got on a plane, flew out to Thailand, almost missed a connecting flight, uh, had to somehow like make... Uh, get another flight because they hadn't booked me even though I had the ticket and I had to run across the airport with my luggage to be the last person in as they were closing the gates. I, I quite literally ran across the entire airport to make it to the last flight uh, to, to head out to Phuket in Thailand. And I got on the plane, made it there, I gained a level of clarity that I realized there's nothing wrong with my business. In fact, it's, it really is serving me and there was nothing wrong with it. It was all here in my head and I knew it was just a shift in mindset that I needed to have. And then that's where I had, let's just say the, the enlightenment, if you want to call it, or the, the clarity to, to say, well, you know what I really would like to be doing is serving men like myself. Married men who are entrepreneurs who have to juggle marriage, life, health, relationship with the kids, uh, the impact and, and relationship and connectedness with the business. How do you how do you balance all of that? You know, that's where I said, this is the arena that I want to play in. This is where I want to serve men most. And that's where I created the rich man experience. And that's where I gained my clarity because rich, I, I, I basically created an acronym for rich. So to help redefine rich as a value system and a values is, you know, we hear the word values, but the way I look at values is that they can become a compass for us to make confident and clear decisions. And so rich stands for respected, inspired, connected, and happy. And it, and it helps to serve men to know if they should be doing certain things and the way they should, right? So, you know, if you're going to go ahead and do this, will it allow me or how can I show up as a respected man? How can I come from a place where I'm coming from inspiration as opposed to motivation or being forced to do something? How do I be, how can I be most connected with the best version of myself and how can I best connect with whoever else I'm interacting. Mm -hmm. And then happy. Am I coming from a place that's going to serve from a place of happiness, not uh, a place of, you know, immediate, immediate satisfaction, but actually long-term happiness. That may mean 
pushing back short-term satisfaction to create long-term happiness. And so that to me became that next shift in my life where I started doing a lot of the coaching and uh, part of the story that I always share or sometimes I forget to say is I did make it back. I did not miss the birth of my child. Um, and here we are, you know, four and a half, five years later where I've been serving men on that capacity. And then a year ago is where I decided to write the book. And the reason is, is I realized that not everybody is ready for coaching like, cause it's, a, it's a financial and emotional commitment that you have to decide on to go into coaching. Well, it's funny because you, sometimes you, there's all kinds of different coaches and all different price ranges and stuff like that and levels of prices and, and that. But is it something, it's a mindset of people's like, wow, that's really expensive. But isn't it like investing in yourself? Is how important is that? You're looking at like a different mindset instead of being in an expense, being an investment. I don't know what your thoughts about that. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm definitely the type of person that looks at things as investments because I, I'm aware that I can do I can take whatever material that I'm investing in and invest it back in myself, in my business, in my family, in my relationships, and get a return. But not everybody looks at it like that. And that's part of it. Part of it is shifting it into the words that we use, right? One of the things that I would share is the words that we use become the lens in which we view the world. So if it's an expense, now it's a liability. It's something that is not serving you. It's just going out. If it's an investment, it's something that you're putting in that you're going to get a greater return. And all of a sudden, just by changing the way you look at things or the way you talk about things, completely shifts the way you view it and approach it. I was wondering what um what is what is like you've been a coach for men for a little bit now and what are some of the the, the things that one of your clients anything stories you could share that breakthroughs they've had? One would be something as simple as as understanding the power of values. I had this one client who who has this successful um, basketball business, like he he does uh, basketball programs for kids. And one of the biggest shifts that I saw in him was when he gained the clarity on his values, right? Once you understand and create values that are powerful, emotional, and agile. And here's what I mean. When you talk about values, people say, oh, you know, I value my family. I value this. And they'll have a list of a million things that they value, but none of them are set up in a way for you to use them on a day-to-day basis, right? Um, I'll give you an example. My personal value system can be summed up in three words, light, love, and creator. If I'm aligned with those three words and they each have like my definition around each one of those, I know that I'm showing up as the best version of myself, right? Mm-hmm. Me being a creator means me actually getting the opportunity to create, whether it's create connections, create actually, you know, whether it's art or programs or, or content, whatever it is, me being a creator is a big part of me, of who I am and when I'm showing up as the best version of myself. Light Am I being a light to this world? You know, when you're in the darkness, think about if you've ever walked into a dark room, do you, you don't just stride into a dark room. You take really calculated small steps and you're like reaching out in front of you, um, trying to make sure you don't, you know, smash into a wall or something because everything is dark. The second you have light, all of a sudden your confidence, your clarity improves. So, Am I being a light to any situation? Am I being a light in someone's life? Am I being a light in far as what it is that I'm sharing with this world? Those are the kinds of things that help drive me. And then finally, love. You know, am I coming from a place of love? Am I, if I am sharing something with you, is it coming from a place of service you know, love and service are very much connected to me. Am I coming from a place of service where I am truly 
and authentically serving with my whole heart. That's part of love for me. So those three things allow me to know at any given moment if I'm in aligned with my values. Is it, you can use like a filter, a filter system too, like when you're, you're making decisions, use that filter? Yeah, sure. Well, let me step back to I mentioned about my client. So, you know, he had this business and he's one of these guys that is super excited about things and always coming up with ideas. And the second he understood his values, he realized very quickly that now he had a process for determining what things to focus on and what not, right? So, you know, before it was like, oh, I want to start doing shirts. I want to um, add this extra program and I want to do this. And I said, okay, wait, let's go through that within the realm of you aligning with your values. So in order to start shirts, how would you do it to align with your values? And then he said, okay, well, in order for that to happen, I need to have this in place. Great. I have to, you know, um, I don't remember off the top of my head what his three words were, but, you know, he said, oh, you know, I have to be aligned with this, you know, showing love and sharing this with this person when I'm talking with them and creating this. I need to, if I'm going to do this program, I need to get my team involved in this manner so that I'm operating at my best and I can serve them and teach them to the best of my ability. Right. So now there's that clarity of knowing how to apply your strengths and the things you value most in the different situations of your life. Does that does that help or no? Yeah, that helped. That was very clear. That was very clear what we were getting at. And it's like very it answered the question. I appreciate it. Um, I want to say wrapping up um, final thoughts for any men out there and and um, where they can find you. Sure. So, I mean, first and foremost, I. I feel really strongly the book I feel is awesome, right? And I know, obviously, I wrote it, but I'm going to tell you that this was one of those things that I never thought in my, in my life I'd be writing a book. This book is not written because I'm a natural writer. This book is written because this message needs to be shared. And I feel very extremely fortunate that I have a wife that can help translate my thoughts into a way that most people can understand, right? So when I think about things, my brain works like, I don't know if you've ever seen like a mind map where yep. you'll like put something in the center and you kind of shoot, like my thought processes go like that. When I write, it's very much like that. She, on the other hand, does not work like that. She's like, yes, I understand that's the way your brain works, but most of the people, especially if you're getting new material, needs to have a sequence. So she helped me actually translate what this explosion of thoughts that are constantly happening in my head and put it in a way that is now easy to follow and applicable. Right. Mm -hmm. So she helped me look, you need to reorganize this. This belongs over here. Share a little bit more about it here to bring this to life. Like she would say, do you have a story to share with this? And what becomes really apparent in that is the impact that my father had on, on my life. So this book not only will serve as a guide to help you create your purposeful and powerful legacy, but you'll start seeing that there's, there is a certain level of paying homage to my father and the impact that he's had in my life and the many stories in the book that help reflect that. And I think, you know, the, the feedback that I've gotten from, from the readers has been, I feel like I know you better, mm -hmm. but more importantly, I feel like I know myself better because these stories help me remember stories about the people that matter most in my life and the experiences that I had and what I want to create for myself and for my family, especially as a father. You know, one of the things that I found most important is that fathers, unlike single guys, tended to have a deeper sense of duty to create that legacy because there is somebody coming after you that is directly related to you. And so your example will be directly reflected on their lives. 
So this book is going out to all the fathers, most certainly. And you can find that on LegacyCodeBook.com. Uh, you can get it there. And um, there we have some bonuses of uh, some other interviews that we've done. So you can get that as well. And I, I would say you can also find me on ArmandoCruz.com, which is the hub for everything. But uh, the book itself, go to Legacy Code Book. And I would say go after that. Be purposeful about creating your legacy and creating the impact that you want in this world because you deserve to create that impact and the world deserves to get that that gift from you. Don't die with your gifts, <laughs> you know, without ever being shared. Well, thanks, Amando. Thanks for being on the podcast today. All the links will be in the show notes. And um, I really want to say thank you for being on the show today. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Joe, for having me and um, for this opportunity. Next up, <laughs> this is this is really cool, actually. And in the beginning, I, I asked you, what if God actually friended you on Facebook? What would you do? Well, there's a new TV show that came out on, I caught this on CBS on Sunday night. I really liked it, actually, because two things. They talk about podcasting, and I can tie this into the podcast because of the, the dad and son relationship. And the and this um, TV show, God friends Mile Finder. He's an atheist with a podcast. Like a podcast what you listen to now. And... Miles doesn't believe in God, so he thinks some guy's playing a prank on him. So we have this friend who uh, is a hacker trying to figure out the IP address and stuff. Well, the point is, he doesn't believe in God, but God keeps sending a friend requests. And Miles keeps ignoring God's friend request. And you don't ignore God because God turned all the heat up and all the music and all the alarms off. It was a riot because it's, it's it was a great TV show. And what also was interesting, too, is during the episode, Miles gets friend suggestions by God. And this one guy was a doctor who was having a bad day, lost, lost a patient on the table, broke up with his girlfriend. And Smile's like, you know what? I'll, I'll take the suggestion of God. And he ended up saving this guy's life. And a couple of the characters in the show and everything tied it together nice. It was, it was really cool, actually. I would highly recommend if you have an opportunity. It's family. I think it's family friendly right now. It's kind of a cool way to see what Facebook and podcasts can do together and father and son relationship. Check it out over at cbs dot cbs dot com, and the TV show is God Friended Me. It's really really good. Well, that's all I have this episode. Heading out the door, I want to say thank you to Armando Cruz for being the guest on the podcast. You can find more about him over at amandacruz.com. You can find his book, too, also on amazon.com. You can find all the links in the show notes over at nosittingonthesideline.com slash 57. Please comment on the podcast. All comments help improve the podcast. If, if you do a comment to say hello or, or something you might find interesting you want to talk about, reach out. Reach out and have a conversation. This is important. If you have a second, head over to Apple Hop Podcast or your favorite I'm a favorite podcast guest. Leave a review. Let me know how I'm doing. You can find all my contact information of nocityonthesideline.com slash contact. Well, final thoughts. It's, I guess, final thought wrapping up, I guess. My whole thing about um, living now, the life and like want, living, you know, legacy and important moments in life. It's important for me. I, I love my son. I mean, last few years has been a rough ride, and um, I want to I want to lead by example for him. It's not easy. It's not easy, but I want to leave an example and leave a legacy that he'll be proud of for this podcast. For me being a a great dad, because it's important. Time is short. Please, man, things go by so quick. And also things can change in a, <laughs> in a, in a heart a heartbeat and drop of a dime, whatever one you want to use. So it's important. Spend time with people you love. Tell them you love them. Tell them you care. You know, and don't take things for granted. Until next time. Take care. God bless. See ya. Thanks. 
Thank you for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe to the newsletter to receive updates of the show and helpful and useful tips. This has been a production of Foley 42 Media. Thank you.